hello. And I turn this off. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm Sherry Nunez, and representing um, Nunez Mexican Mission. And this is me. You get to see me live, and you get to see me on screen. <laughs> and a lot of you know me, and some of you were uh, commenting from years back that you, you know me. And others probably not. So I want to give a little brief um, background. I have my um, Bachelor of Arts from Eastern Christian College and my MA from uh, Lincoln. But I, in fall of 1983, I moved to Saltillo, Mexico, and then in 84, Mexico City. And in spring, summer of 2014, I moved to Guanajuato, Mexico. So um, in the past, before going to Guanajuato, I taught in a, a little Bible institute. I had Bible clubs, worked with Bible clubs, worked with a church plant in Hico, Mexico, uh, it, out in the state of Mexico, right outside of Mexico City. Um, also worked in a school for missionary kids, worked in camps and youth conferences and, and things like that. So that's just a little bit of background. And some of the results of that uh, background. The church plant in Hico, uh, the church is still going. Um, three men from the congregation went on to Bible college and are serving in different parts of Mexico. And the son of one of them is now at one of the Bible colleges I'm currently teaching at. So that makes me feel old. But <laughs> the school for missionary kids, not, not all the kids made good decisions with their lives later on, but a lot of them did go on um, I know one of them is a missionary wife and translator in Chile. If you're um, familiar with Jack Cottrell, she translates some of his works into, into Spanish. Uh, I know of at least two that are in ministry in Mexico and several in ministry in the uh, States. Uh, the little Bible Institute that only met on Friday nights for people that couldn't go off to Bible college, uh, some of them did go on, <laughs> decided they could go on up to Bible college and are in full-time ministry, and others I know are still active and serving in their local congregations, um, but with a little bit more um, knowledge. Uh, camps and youth conferences, uh, some of the kids from there I know have gone on to full-time ministry. Some of the kids are faithful and active in the local church, and one of them is my son-in-law, so. <laughs> uh, I live in Guanajuato, Mexico, which is where the pin is. Uh, Mexico City is the circle uh, down below. And from where I live, it's still 11 hours up to the border in McAllen, the closest border. So um, this is the city of Guanajuato. The city name means place of the frogs. So that's why you'll see some frogs out on the display table. There's not many frogs there, but they've got that name. And the little red dot down at the bottom where the arrow just flew in, right down at the bottom of the screen, that's where I live. I don't live in the touristy part of town. I live in where the town's expanding out. And, you know, in the past, I taught and I have, was involved in a church plant. Now that I'm in Guanajuato, I teach and I'm involved in a church plant. So I teach at two Christian colleges. One's a... Um, Universidad Cristiano de Mexico, Mexican Christian University. The other is uh, Colegio Cristiano del Centro, Central Christian College. And the church plant is in my house. Hola, ¿qué tal? This is my co-worker, and he would like to present himself. Hello, good afternoon, morning or evening. I don't know what time it will be when you watch this video. It's a pleasure to be able to present myself to you. My name is Carlos Enrique Recinos Rodriguez, although all my life I've been called Kalin, and that's the name that I prefer. I'm living right now in the state of Guanajuato, although I was born in the south of this country in a place called Tuxtla Chico, Chiapas. I'm currently 37 years old, and in 2005, I graduated from Bible college. I've been serving for seven years as a teacher in that same institution. And a few years ago, we started a church work. I would like to be very sincere with you about this. At first, it was not something I had on my heart or my mind. I always wanted to serve the Lord. I've been active in the things of the Lord. 
I've dedicated more than 15 years to preaching, to helping in what I can in churches, but it was never my desire to be at the head of something, to be in charge. But God put in my heart and in the community in which I currently live in Guanajuato, the idea of starting a work. And sometimes when God makes a calling, it's difficult to say no. Um, I started with a sister in her house in prayer, having prayer, and gradually people started coming to meet with us until a little over three years ago. Actually, it was a little over four. Um, sister Sherry started helping by offering us a space in her house so we could meet together. As everyone knows, the pandemic made some people move away from God, made some people cold, but also many had in their hearts a desire to know God. At the beginning of the pandemic, we only did preaching through phone calls. I had to uh, preach through phone calls as many of our um, congregation do not use internet. On this, um, in June in 2020, on June 12th, my dad died. My dad was a preacher in the state of Mexico in the Church of Christ of Raul Romero. And I inherited from him the preaching that he was doing online. This was during COVID. So since June 12, I am preaching online and also taking care of the church here in Guanajuato, the mission in Santa Rosa. And now I um, give messages online on Wednesdays, Sundays, and a, a closed Bible study or a private Bible study on Thursdays. I have two bachelor degrees, one in theology and one in communication sciences. We've been activating the community that we live in. It's a community called Yerba Buena, and we want to influence both youth and families. We want the God's word, um, we know it has the power to change and transform lives. We've experienced this. It's also been a little bit difficult as the principles that people have learned from their parents are deeply rooted. They're not very devout, but sometimes custom makes them reject the gospel. In this congregation, despite being few, about 30 and growing, we've experienced God's power, love, and mercy. In this congregation, and Sherry's going to tell you about it, we have had people with cancer who have been healed. We have had people who have come out of drug addiction and drug trafficking. We have people whose families have been restored, and we have people who continue to pray, wait, and cry out to God for a change in their health. Let me, let, you, let me tell you that I want to be the first to thank you for your prayers, your support, because we have felt and received God's blessing through all of you. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you for being interested in this place. I invite you, if in your prayers you remember us, please don't stop praying to the Lord for him to give us the strength and the courage to continue preaching in this place. At first, I told you that we were few, and so, as I told you, at first there were, we were few and there was not a need for a lot of things. Now that we are growing, we need a bigger place. We need more chairs and we need a bigger place, and it's not just a necessity that I see, but the brothers and sisters are moved by the idea of wanting to create and of taking the kingdom of God to limits that even we do not imagine. Pray for us a lot, please. And if someday you want to visit us, remember that you have a house, a home, in the capital city of Guanajuato. In a moment, Sherry will show you some pictures of the congregation, and we'll talk a little more about these people who I tell you have impacted my life. God has worked through them in a surprising way, and believe me, that which for me was at first not a plan, when God's in charge of something, well, now I see it's a great blessing. 
how God changes, transforms, makes flourish a heart that was deserted. So join us to see these stories and join us also to see what God is doing here in the capital of Guanajuato. I'm your friend Kalin. God bless you. I did want to present you my coworker because he's a big part of the mission now and it, yeah, he couldn't come up to meet you personally. So um, I want to tell you about some of the people in the congregation though. The lady in red is Dora and she is an Uber driver. And now her husband also drives Uber. They are a couple that came to church because she picked us up in her Uber one day. <laughs> and um, since she did a good job, uh, we got her phone number and then in conversation that came up, she had a little church background, but she'd fallen away. But now they're one of the uh, strongest families in the congregation. They came with a, you know, some marital problems, but they've been working through those. And they are, um, good at inviting other people, and that's so important. Um, they invited their neighbor, Doña Silvia, the lady with the short hair, and she's coming now. They invited the man in the back, now the one with the uh, kimon shirt. Now, you can't tell him from his face, but he works as a clown. <laughs> <laughs> but he um, is a friend of theirs, and he's going through some family problems right now. His wife has abandoned him and their two children, two little boys. And ever since the, they invited him and he started coming, uh, he's been coming regularly now. He, he had been looking for answers in a, in a bottle, so he's got some things he's working through too. But God is great, and we're glad that he's looking in the right place. Um, I'd like to tell you about uh, two sisters. First, I'd like to tell you about the one in red and white at the bottom. That's Doña Carmen, and she is the one that um, she had cancer, but she didn't tell her family at first. She'd just go off for her treatments, but they noticed that she wasn't as chipper as she always was because she's a very chipper lady. And um, finally they wormed it out of her and she had been praying all along for her health, but then we, you know, her family started praying and we started praying for her too. And the news wasn't all that good, uh, but one day she went back to the doctor and he looked at her studies and he said, you're fine, you don't have anything. So, um, you know, God doesn't always choose to, to heal, but he chose to, to heal her. And we're very thankful that's been about three or four years now that she's been cancer free. Um, she is good at inviting people and her sister, the uh, lady in white in the middle up there, uh, is also good at inviting people to church. And between the two of them, these are some of their neighbors that have started coming. First, the lady in white, um, Doña Reina started a Bible study with the couple that's at the top. And then they invited the other lady uh, who works a, a store, her family owns a little store. And then she invited Kalin to go and help her with the Bible study. Now they're all coming to church and the couple at the top, um, they have some health problems. She was given seven days to live uh, about two or three months ago, but she's still going and trying some new treatments and um, severe uh, kidney problems is what I understand. He's legally blind, so we also run a, <laughs> take my van and go and pick people up because not everybody can get there on their own. The lady at the bottom, uh, Doña Lupe, she uh, came and she had heard a little bit because one of her daughters goes to church, but when she came, she said, I want to be baptized when she first started coming from what she'd learned in the Bible study and knew from her daughter. So after working with her a little bit, we, we were able to have her baptism. Now we had a baptism prior to hers this year and we had that in my bathtub. I've got a big bathtub and it was a, a 14 year old teenage boy that we could kind of fold up and get into the bathtub. But um, you know, she's shaky uh, because of some health problems she has. So that wouldn't work. So we bought a inflatable swimming pool, put it up in the living room. Of course, we had to siphon the water out because you can't just pull the plug in the living room. But <laughs> yeah, um, we were able to rejoice with her in her, her baptism. Now, even the people that have been invited are starting to invite people. And th this is so wonderful because um, the couple that I showed you, 
they invited the man in the red shirt. Now the man in the red shirt comes from a family that is involved in illegal activities. I'm not sure uh, so much about his personal story because I know his son was getting into drugs. He has him in a rehab center and he wanted to look for some place because he knows when his son gets out, he's gonna have the same influences and everything. He wants something different. And so he started looking for answers and they invited him to church and he's been coming faithfully ever since. He's missed maybe two Sundays because of an extreme pain in his leg. He fell from 12 or 15 meters and a meter is 39 inches. So, you know, he's right on his feet. So the one leg is going all over the place. And it's fixable with an operation, but he's low income. Um, so they're looking now for a foundation that can help him get that fixed. But um, he's been very faithful and, and wants to bring his son when he comes out of the rehab. Now, these are some of the kids. I teach Sunday school. Um, the two girls at the bottom are two of a family of six kids. Five of the kids come to church. The oldest uh, girl works on Sundays. And the other three kids are from the neighborhood. Now, the two girls, um, the one that uh, doesn't have cancer anymore, she lived near them and invited them. They're really close with her. So she invited that family, and now, like I said, five of the kids are coming. The neighborhood kids don't come very often to Sunday school, but when they do, we take advantage of um, teaching them about, about Christ. And this is Claudia, she and Dora and Dora's daughter are taking over Sunday school for me while I'm up here. <coughs> this is our youth class. We don't have anybody at the church right now that can teach the youth class. And so Kalin's fiance, Wendy, gets online and teaches from the state of Mexico, about four and a half hours away. She gets online and teaches our, our youth through the computer. And if you see the kids standing up, both the kids and the young people, it's because we have, after the class, they tell what they've learned after church. And so we started asking the adults too, what did you learn in the sermon? So the adults have to pay good attention in the sermon too to tell us what they, they've learned. And two of the boys in the upper left hand for you picture um, are also from that family. Of, and this is Aniceto, he's the, the fifth kid of the family that comes to church and he's the one that was baptized earlier this year. Um, he's 14, uh, we told him, you know, you need to talk to your mom and his mom has come to church a few times but is really not interested. Um, but he told her and she didn't say no. But a week or so later when she was drunk, um, she threw him out of the house. Just for the night, when she was sober the next day, she let him back in. But she's done that twice now. And so you keep him in your prayers. He's um, always listening to Christian music on his phone and he's um, really interested. He went to, he, when the Bible study was going at the other place, he went and now that um, they're starting to come on Wednesday nights, which before it was just a projection. That one's on too. Um, there, he's coming there now too. This is a mission in Santa Rosa. We haven't been as um, consistent in getting out there as we would like. Uh, during COVID, we weren't able to go out much at all because of the health problems of the people that, that live there. But um, we go there to see Don Chava and his family. He's a cousin to the one that doesn't have cancer anymore and her sister. And we um, started going up to pray for him and it turned into a, a Bible study. I know kaleen has been up at least once since, since I've been up here. And although, as we said, at the first of COVID, we uh, just got on the phone and you know, put calls together and had three phones there to, to preach to the people. He, even though he lives up in the mountains and is you know, not, not young, he has a cell phone and he can get online and watch us on Sundays. So even though we can't be with them on Sundays, and he does. Now before COVID struck, we were doing activities with the youth on Friday nights. Uh, we'd like to get that started again at some point because that's when we can get the neighborhood kids to come in. And we would show a movie and have popcorn and then have a devotional thought of something that was in the movie, even if it wasn't a 
you know, Christian movie, uh, get some lesson out of the movie. Uh, we've also done craft activities like making flowers in jello, um, clear jello, and you put a spoon in and inject with a syringe um, colored jello to make the petals, and then you put the spoon in another petal and everything. So now I teach at two Bible colleges. One is in Querétaro, which is about an hour and forty-five minutes away, um, and from the patio of the library, you can see this pyramid that was just discovered a few years ago. Uh, there, I teach Greek, and, you know, there's no getting around it. You have to study if you're going to learn Greek. You have to memorize a lot, but we try to make it fun. We do Twister with the um, articles, uh, try to show verb formation patterns with Legos, and I don't know why they thought they had to dress up like a dinosaur and Mrs. Potato Head to do it, but <laughs> they had fun. And vocabulary card games. Uh, also, I teach at San Luis Potosi, and Kalin also teaches there. That's where he graduated from. Uh, the top picture, we were helping to mow some of the grass. Mow is a relative term, two of them were going at it with machetes and the, the actual mowing machine uh, kept turning off. So <laughs> I was collecting grass. And then there's the faculty at the bottom. One of them is uh, a recently graduated student. The two Bible colleges are very different. The UCM, the first one is more uh, formal and has to, they, they have, they can give a degree that the government will, will recognize. The other is more, uh, it, the degree is recognized among the churches, but not a, a, at the government level. And they take kids that are just out of junior high. That's why Kalin went in when he was 15 and has already graduated and been in service for, for quite a while. Um, there are some other pictures with some of the students there too. And uh, here we're organizing tiles with the Greek alphabet. Kalin teaches introduction to the Bible, homiletics, music theory, how to lead worship, and sometimes prophets. And he wanted to make his introduction to the Bible class something that the people could use to teach others about what the Bible is made of and how, how um, different things about it. So he had them make these projects. These are five of the eight students he had in the class at that time. Oh, I'm pushing the wrong thing. Okay, that would make sense. All right, and I teach Greek and Gospels at that. And of course, teaching a lot involves a lot of um, grading. So I had to wait for Kalin to get out of a doctor's appointment uh, at one point, and I had my grading system set up in the car there. Um, Paul told Timothy, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Um, you know that pre being prepared in and out of uh, season means in times when when the conditions are favorable and times when they aren't. And we all know that COVID made the conditions unfavorable for a while. And a lot of people learned a lot about transmissions that we didn't know before. <laughs> so um, shortly after, like I, we said, we started with the, the calling on the phone. And then um, we also began to include transmissions when Kalin's dad died and he was transmitting for the church that his dad was preaching at uh, until they got a minister. So the few people like Dora and Don Chava, Don, Don Chava who can get on the phone and watch it were, were able to watch them and the rest of them were still on the telephone. Uh, also our classes, now our classes, um, I go to Querétaro one day a week to teach and then I teach online another day. In San Luis we try to do in person at San Luis uh, one week and then the next week we teach from home through the computer. So a lot of, Zoom made a lot of money off of a lot of us <laughs> during, during COVID. But another thing that we did was we had a, um, transmissions throughout the week when, when everything was shut down. 
and people didn't have any place to go, anything to do. Uh, we were transmitting up to four times a week. And it started with the three guys that are at the top left-hand corner. But then soon they asked me to start helping them run the controls. And then when one of them couldn't be there, they started putting me on screen too. And we even did a little, some, some of them were Bible studies, some were interviews with preachers or uh, singers, Christian singers. Um, his sister started one for kids and we ran the controls for that. One of our Bible studies was looking for treasure in the Bible and we even made a little short introductory video with uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark type theme. I was the one that sat in the office and sent them out. The guys actually in the video jump over a small wall. So <laughs> this is the graduation. We only had one graduate from um, San Luis this year. Uh, when Tony first came in as a student, he was not used to studying because he had spent his youth in um, drugs and, and things like that. He got his life together and, and wanted to learn, but he wasn't used to studying because he hadn't, really. So he wouldn't turn in homework on time. He failed my class, the Gospels class, the first time. But he grew so much during those four years. And then, you know, his last two years, he would just you know, grab a professor, grab me sometimes, grab other professors, and, and want to talk to them about things he'd been learning or things he was studying. And so it was a real joy to see him graduate this year. The man standing beside him is uh, Don Jaime. He is from San Luis. When we teach at San Luis, we teach two days, and Don Jaime has opened his home for us to stay there. He and his wife, uh, they have, um, they're uh, pretty well off, actually, have their own business. And, and um, when they built a new house next to their old house, they assigned rooms even before they moved in. Okay, this is gonna be Colleen's room, this is gonna be Sherry's room. So uh, when the church started meeting in my home, my house was just recently built and it only had concrete floors. It didn't have um, any flooring on it. And he thought, no, for the church meets, it really needs a floor. So he got on the phone, he got some people together and he put some money in and they put some money in. And all we had to do was the labor. They bought all the materials for putting the floor in that space. So um, this graduation took place on a Friday night. Not the Saturday right after that, but the following Saturday, his wife came home from a woman's retreat and found him dead in between the, where they parked the cars and the front door. And um, so he will, he is sorely missed. But I share this sad news not to, you know, be a bummer or anything, but just because we never know when we're going to leave this world. We never know what's going to happen, who's going to be here and who's not. Uh, Paul also wrote to Timothy, what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, commit to faithful men who will be able to, uh, to teach others also. 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And that's what we want to do in the mission. We want to be able to, to raise up these new leaders because some of the other ones are, are, we lost a lot of preachers to COVID. I don't know about up here, but we lost a lot of preachers to COVID and a few to other health problems during the time of COVID like Kaleen's dad. Um, so it's really important to be able to teach the people, teach the kids in Bible college, teach the people in the local congregation to reach out to others because we don't know how long we're gonna be around. That's also one of the reasons I wanted to present Kaleen to you. He's younger than I, hopefully he'll be around longer but, uh, and keep the mission going once I'm gone. But. Um, these are some of the things that we do, the meet in the congregation, starting to take the people to different events. The youth are going to a youth rally, inner city, or between several cities, youth rally. The men to a men's retreat. We're teaching in the Bible colleges. When you see a picture like this, you're not always sure at the very beginning if it's a sunrise or a sunset. And that's kind of appropriate because the sunset of some of us needs to be the sunrise of others. And I hope to go on for several years, but I, you never know. So it's so important to be able to teach others and um, encourage
encourage others to take up the mantle. Um, we appreciate you. The congregation also says hi, or part of the congregation says hi and appreciates you. Uh, the Bible colleges do not give more than one, one Bible college gives a little bit of travel money that doesn't even begin to cover the cost because the best way to get there is through a toll road, so it takes, takes a while. Um, takes, takes a bit of money, but it's, it's the offerings from churches like, like yours that, that keep us going and keep us able to, to go to these different places and teach different things and, and have what we, we need to do all this. So we greatly appreciate you and thank you. I didn't check the time. I hope I didn't go over, but I will be able to answer any questions on the way out by the display table. So I will hand it over to